Amen. Praise God. For the past almost a year, I have been coming here from the pulpit and I would say to you, what an exciting times we are living. I mean, you have, you have an option. You can look at what's going on and you can be terrified and you can be depressed and you can say, well, what can we do? Is there anything we can do? We're doomed. And I get that messages from people, including Christians. What can be done? There is nothing we can do. No, that's not true. Last time I preached, I told you, fear not. The living God did not give us a spirit of fear, but he has given us a spirit of sound mind. A perfect love, he says, casts all. How many fears? All, all fears away. So why would, be, why would we be afraid? Who is greater, the God that is in us or the God that is in them? Why would we be terrified? It's a good question for the church, especially for the church pastors. So I decided to look at what's going on as the greatest opportunity that God has given to us during our lifetime. This is our time, people. This is our time to shine. People are being depressed. They're committing suicides. They are fearful. They're terrified. They don't know what to do. They have no hope. And here is the church that is the light in the darkness. That's our job. Jesus did not go to the lepers and say, oh, uh, what can I do? There's nothing I can do. You're so sick. It's over. You got leprosy. No, he healed the lepers. He healed the sick. It says everyone that would come to him, he would heal. All of them, it says he would heal. What is the job of a church? What is the job of a pastor? If not, to obey the word of God. And what the word of God is saying? Lay hands on the sick. And it's not talking about lay hands on the sick. It's talking lay hands on the sick, anoint them with oil and pray. Why? Because a prayer of a righteous man. There you go. So a few weeks ago, I had an opportunity to preach about fear. Fear or fear not? That is the question. Today I want to talk about something that every one of you, including the liberals and the devilish and all the messed up, see. It's in your face. You cannot escape it. Even if you really tried, you just can't. Because you see it in the workplaces, you see it on TV, you see it at the bus stations, you see when people are driving their cars. Yeah. Heavy delusion. Yeah. I want to talk about delusion. When you fight God and His laws for a long time, if you resist His spirit with the passion of a madman, eventually you will become a madman. Pride, arrogance, rebellion, and open disregard towards God's commandments will turn you into nothing more than an animal. Yeah. You know, with my brother and friends, we go to the mountains. And we have been privileged to see animals. How do they behave? We sometimes will watch them all day long. What is the life of an animal? That's a good uh, music. Uh, for the preaching. What is the life of an animal? You eat. Okay, this will sound terrible. I'll say it anyway. You poop and you sleep. And then the next day comes and you do this all over again until the day someone shoots you <laughs> or you die. Is that your portion? You're just existing? You're just waking up and you do your thing and then you die? Is that what God intended for us? To be just like animals? I do get it. I do understand that they teach you in school that you're nothing more than a monkey. And you know what? Looking at the people today, I kind of understand where this whole thing came from. Because when I look at our nations, I see the planet of apes. Have you ever watched that movie? Yes. I mean, they look like apes, sorry. You put that mask, you put that diaper on, you look like an ape. No offense, it's just that's what comes to my mind. Planet of the apes. 
It's crazy. Just like the animals. They have been teaching our children that they are no more than animals, so the children started to act like animals. Viciously, evil, with violence. It's what I want. And you see, that's the animal lifestyle. It's every day what I want, what I need. It's me. No one else, nothing else matters. It's me, I, and myself. You will simply exist. Everything will be about you and about your needs. Nothing and no one will matter. Just you and your wants. You will think that you are the center of the universe and others are at your disposal. In other words, it's what I want and the people around me will have to dance according to my tunes. It sounds like politicians. You, the master, they, the people around you, slaves. And that, my friends, is a heavy delusion. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians 2.11. For this reason, for this reason, remember those words, God, not Satan, not an enemy, not Justin Trudeau, not this misguided psychopath mayor of the city of Calgary, not those people. God will send upon them a deluding influence. Literally and correctly, a working of error. An active power of misleading. Error which shows itself in action. The lie, falsehood in all its forms. Strong delusion, heavy delusion. So that they will believe what is false. God will give them a heavy delusion so they will believe what is false, what is a lie. In order, why? In order that they all may be judged who did not believe the truth, rejected the truth, rejected Jesus Christ, God, but took pleasure in wickedness. What is wickedness? The fact of being morally very wrong or bad. So let's talk a little bit about Canada, our wonderful nation that we love so much. For the past 40, 50 years, we have been murdering our own people in the name of convenience. Let's just slaughter them through abortion clinics, call it whatever, medical centers, where you got so-called doctors and nurses, and they will murder the future citizens, the future lovers of this country, the future soldiers of this country, the future good police officers or scientists or biologists or teachers, professors. Let's slaughter them because we don't want them. And let's replace them with the people that hate us and they hate everything we stand for. Let's replace them with Islam, for example, or atheists or communists. And this, is, this has been going on for the past 40 years. Yeah. Canadians decided that worshiping the living God and honoring him is not beneficial. Let's worship a God called homosexuality. And let's do it in such a way that we will parade naked in front of our children, our neighborhoods, and let's call it pride in the face of God. And let's use God's symbols in his face, saying to him, and what are you going to do about it? Well, ladies and gentlemen, he's doing something about it. Yeah. Welcome to Canada 2020. When the nation is being judged, and the homosexuals are ruling. You see, I have been preaching this for so long. The very thing you tolerate, sooner or later, is going to rule over you. Yeah. If you tolerate homosexuality, sooner or later, is going to rule over you. Let me tell you something. Who is the chief medical officer in this country? A gentleman that was born a man, a communist, an immigrant to this country, that is ruling over those people that accepted that kind of behavior. And he has a message for you, pastors and churchgoers. You are unessential. Not needed. We actually do not want you. When the pastors and the leaders and the churchgoers went to bed with that prostitute, they thought to themselves, surely we'll make peace with an enemy. 
surely they will respect us because we're so loving to them. We're so kind to them. It's like saying to an SS officer that took that baby upside down and threw it on a wall in front of the mother. And say to that officer, you know what, but God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. <laughs> you know, go home and, and have a good day. I'll pray for you, and uh, you know, would you like hot chocolate? <laughs> I mean, you got another baby to go, right? So I understand it's a hard job, and you're just following orders after all. I mean, you're not guilty, right? It's, you're not doing, in fact, you are not the one to blame, it's the one that is sending you. And we have been playing this game for so long that Canadians have lost the ability to understand what is right and what is wrong. Yeah. And God finally stood up from the throne and said, fine, have it your way. Have it your way. I'll give you even stronger delusion that you will not even know what your real name is. A delusion is a fixed belief that is not receptive, responsive to change in light of conflicting evidence. As a pathology, it is distinct from a belief based on false or incomplete information, confabulation, dogma, illusion, or some other misleading effects of perception. Is that not your neighbors today? It doesn't matter how much of truth you're going to give it to them, they cannot comprehend that. They immediately reject the truth because they went so much into a side of heavy delusion they cannot comprehend the real deal, the truth. A false belief that continues in spite of the facts. It doesn't matter how many videos you will show them. It doesn't matter what kind of biological evidence you're going to present to them. They're not interested in the truth. They're not interested in the truth anymore. Information Truth, biology, it means absolutely nothing to them. So what we are witnessing right now is a heavy global delusion that was triggered, and listen to this, by focusing on self, yeah. on selfishness. Yeah. At all costs, self-preservation. Yeah. Based on fear rather than science, biology, or medical information and facts. Lifestyle of perpetual sin, an open rejection of God's laws, the unwillingness to crucify flesh. Oh, how many times I said to you and to others, you want to have a successful life as a Christian, you got to die. It's not a very popular message because other pastors will tell you, you can have the greatest life on this side of eternity, you can have your best now. Jesus says die. Yeah. Jesus is crucified. Yeah. Your flesh, your ego, your plans, your ambitions, your bank accounts, your wives, your daughters, your sons. Give them all to me. Give them up in order so you can get everything back. But people are not willing to do that. Unwillingness to crucify flesh led to a total collapse of morals and the ability to distinguish what is right and what is wrong. What is a lie? And what is truth? Wear a mask that does not work. Stop human interactions. Separate. Divide. While we know that the consequences of such actions have opposite effects. Actually kills people. Makes them sick. However, people under heavy delusion want to do them to save lives. An oxymoron. Put that mask on, save lives. Put that mask on, we know it doesn't work. The doctors say it does not work. Everyone says it does not work, that actually has a brain. But put that mask on, save lives. Kevin, save lives, put that mask on. <laughs> Delusions have been found to occur, occur, occur in a context of many pathological states, both general physical and mental, and are of particular 
diagnostic importance in psychotic disorders, including, listen, schizophrenia, paraphrenia, manic episodes of bipolar disorder, and psychotic depression. What you're seeing right now is a lot of sick people running around. That is why it is not uncommon to see people disturbed and even attacking those that do not wear masks or do not practice social distancing. In their paranoia, fear and delusion, you are the bad for not being afraid and the fear mongers are the good. Yeah. Reverse psychology. Driven by fear and selfishness, they have lost the ability to see their reality. It is clouded by their own sin. Delusional disorder is classified as a psychotic disorder, a disorder where a person has trouble recognizing reality. A delusion is a false belief that is based on incorrect interpretation of reality. They are telling us there is a pandemic. They're telling us people are dying left and right. Yeah. And you go to the hospital after they announced that it's full to capacity and there is no space. And you go over there and it's totally empty. Yeah. And you tell that to the general population, but they cannot comprehend the truth. Immediately, they reject that. It does not fit with their delusion. An inability to distinguish between what is real and what only seems to be real. Is there a virus? Yes, there is a virus. And there are other viruses, and they have been viruses last year, and they're going to be viruses next year. It's part of life. It's inheritance that we received from Adam and Eve, death. Maybe this is a shock to you, but one day you're going to die. And that's just the reality we have to face. The moment you're born, my wife always says this. It's very interesting because the moment you're born, something wants to eat you. And think about it. You got bacteria, you got worms, and you got animals. You can't even go and walk because something somewhere always is to get you. Especially in the hotter countries. That's why I count the blessings. Thank you for my little Siberia. There's not so many bugs that want to eat me here. When we were in Barbados, pretty much wherever you went was something that was eating you. From little tiny bugs that you could not even see, to a stonefish that was to get you, and to all kinds of other, other things. So I'm very grateful that those uh, creatures do not survive minus 30. <laughs> Restrictions, infringements on our lives, rights, businesses, families, churches are good for them. Despite the overwhelming evidence that those restrictions are hurting, destroying, and in some cases, murdering people including some of them. You try to tell that misguided, delusional person that masks are hurting him, we were never designed to have a, a pampers on our face. And you tell them that, and you're the bad guy. You're trying to save their lives. You're trying to tell them, listen, this is not healthy. This is going to cause fungus in your throat, in your mouth. This is going to cause you, later on, serious physical and mental yeah. sicknesses, but you're the bad guy. Yeah. So far, we have a pandemic, right? I'm sure you've heard about it. Wow. We have a pandemic, but so far less people died this year than last year. Oh. I mean, the pandemic didn't realize, or maybe the pandemic is not listening to the news because it didn't kick all the deaths and all the sick people yet. They're not watching CBC. The pandemic is not watching CBC. And that's why it's so far behind with their statistics. Less people died this year than last year. I'll tell you why, because people are afraid to die. That's a good thing. 
That's a good thing. They're so afraid of the virus and to go to the hospitals that they refuse to die. <laughs> it's kind of interesting, psychology. You know, many people go to hospitals and then they do die. They never come back. So lots of people, I guess the pandemic saved a lot of lives, if you think about it. Where is the proof that there is an actual pandemic? The statistics, I would like to see that. The truth becomes, ladies, irrelevant. The illusion is not allowing people to see what really is going on. Psychiat psychiatrist and philosopher Carl Jasper first described the three main criteria that need to be met for a belief to diagnose as a delusional. I'm going to read them and tell me if that's not what is going on right next door. These were outlined in his 1917 work called General Psychopathology and include the following. The false belief is held with absolute certainty, conviction. The belief remains unchanged despite proof that is, it is not true. The belief is false, bizarre, or impossible. If there is a pandemic, please show it to me. If there is an emerging, uh, emergency at the hospital, let me walk in and let me see it. Yeah. Our friend, uh, friend Larry went to all the sites when they're doing tests, and apparently there are 20,000 tests being done a day, but the parking lots are empty, and there's almost no one there. Yeah, that's the truth. There's no one there. Something that is believed to be true or real, but that is actually false or unreal. A person with this illness holds a false belief firmly despite clear evidence or proof to the contrary. Delusions may involve circumstances that could occur in reality even though they are unlikely. For example, the, next, the family next door is plotting to kill you. I need to wear a mask that Every honest doctor knows that it's not protecting me, you or others, from the 1,000 times a virus that is smaller than a bacteria. Yeah. Despite thousands of proof all over, you will still choose to believe that it is actually working. And if you will not wear it, you and others will surely die. Yeah. Those that refuse that delusion are in fact murderers, and the world is dying, perishing, Kevin, because of you. And everyone that attends the rallies, I've heard that with my own ears. Those that go to the freedom rallies are the super spreaders, and they're spreading the disease, and the lockdowns are because of the freedom fighters. Well, let me say something to you. To this day, eight months in the pandemic, I have not met anyone physically that had the virus. I'm not saying that it's not there, don't get me wrong. I'm not the virus COVID denier. I'm just saying if this is such a huge problem, why we are still alive? And why I have to be tested for a virus that I don't even know I have. <laughs> and if I have it and I feel so awesome, why get rid of that? <laughs> I'm keeping that virus, it keeps me happy. <laughs> get away your doctors from me. If I have the virus and I'm so happy, give me another one. <laughs> you understand my point? This is getting ridiculous, but there is a point to that. Canadians have fallen under this heavy delusion because Canadians for a very long time walked away from the truth. When you walk away from the truth, you have a hard time to recognize the real deal. So in other words, anyone can come to you and give you, I won't say that, Kevin, I, I won't say that. That's the name of his book, I won't say it. But anyone anyway, can give you what's the title of his book, so later on you can find out, ask him. It starts with B and ends with S. <laughs> People with delusional disorder, and we have to call this the way it is, 
It's a delusional disorder. It's a sickness. It's a sickness of the spirit and it's a sickness of the mind. Yeah. Yeah. Delusional disorder usually do not have, those that are experiencing this usually do not have hallucinations or major problem with mood. Unlike people with schizophrenia, they tend not to have problems with day-to-day -day functioning. So they will drive their cars with the pampers on, they will go to the stores with the pampers on, they will do their things, and you will not really know, unless you talk to them, that they have this sickness in their hand. Yeah. Other than behaviors related to delusional content, they do not appear odd. I mean, to me, they do right now, but um, normally, they do not. And you see them everywhere, in stores, on TV, in schools, political offices, driving their cars, faithfully wearing those masks and viciously attacking everyone that does not. Facts and truth uh, is at this moment completely irrelevant. They cannot distinguish reality from falsehood. They have been infected with sickness in their body and in their soul. When you detect that, they say, call a professional. When to call a professional? <laughs> Write this down, people. Call the person's primary care doctor, a psych psychiatrist, or other mental health professional as soon as the problem is detected. The problem we have is we cannot do that because the mainstream medical profession is in this sickness altogether. So how, who are we going to call? Today, majority of people are under that heavy delusion. And unfortunately, that includes most of the churchgoers as well. What is the treatment? What is the treatment? Okay, here is what I have uh, Google it up. You know, Googling things up, it's actually quite fascinating. I think all those people that are wearing masks should use it from time to time. Treatment. Psychotherapies that may be helpful in delusional disorder include individual psychotherapy, co cognitive behavioral therapy, and listen to this, and family therapy. Family therapy. In other words, you come to your husband if he's so delusional, you slap him a few times and <laughs> you pray in the name of Jesus, you're delivered and cured. <laughs> That's the family therapy. I think it would work. I'm not advocating violence, domestic violence, okay? So don't accuse me of that. I, it works for me. <laughs> On me. When my wife slaps me a few times, I'm working like never before, like brand spanking new. I do obey the orders. You want to be sane again? You have to come back under the umbrella of family ladies to the father's house. I'm going to kick the Russians out. Russians. Next time, this is like second warning and that's it, you're dead. You gotta go back to the father's house, to the church. Let's go to Luke 15, 11. I'm watching you now like so closely. It's like, it's like, like, like that, okay? Like, Luke 15, 11. Then he said, listen to this, it's a fascinating story. A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods and that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in the land, just like we have in Canada right now, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, you see, Canadians, they got to come back to their senses. 
When he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare? And I pa perish with hunger. I will rise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. I believe the Canadians formed a nation, the forefathers formed a nation that was supposed to be different. Here was to be a land of free, the brave and free. That's why in our national anthem we have God, which is a prayer of humbleness. It's acknowledgement, we need you God. God, keep our land. You keep, we cannot do it. We're not capable of doing it, we're sinners. But you God, you keep this land. Our land, glorious and free. Amen. It's all about freedom. Free. What a life is worth of a slave. Freedom. And he ro arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion. And ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Not proper social distancing. I'm not advocating this. And the son said to him, Father... I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, and I believe God wants to say to Canada, to Canadians, the same message. He said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet, and bring the fatted calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead, and he is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Canadians, you want your blessings? You want your freedom back? Go back to the Father's house. Go back to the very one that created you for a purpose. The very one that blessed the forefathers to create this amazing, beautiful, fantastic, unbelievably beautiful nation called Canada. With the thousands of lakes and seas and oceans and rocky mountains. I mean, this is one of the most beautiful nations on the planet Earth. I say to you, church, fight for it. Take it back. Go back to your father's house. Go back to your father's house. Freedom and prosperity was restored to him. Canada has to go back to God's statues. We need to turn away from our sinful ways. Repent and receive the spirit of the living God, not religion. I'm not advocating religion. I'm not saying you got to go to church, you got to tithe, you got to do this. No, 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 no. You just got to go back to the Father's house. Amen. You got to go back to Him with the spirit of repentance. When God comes and fills our hearts and minds, the heavy delusion automatically disappears and we can see clearly that's why I can see you we can see clearly when an, an individual comes to God anything whatever the lie the falsehood the delusion the schizophrenia whatever it is it disappears because the truth fills your mind, your soul, and your spirit. That's why I can go to the rallies. That's why I can hack thousands of people. That's why I can lay hands on you without the fear of being contaminated with your viruses. Because my eyes have been open and I have become free. My father's son. Yeah. Heir to the throne. With the rope and the sandals. And the ring of authority. Therefore, let's go to John 8, 36. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, sets you free, you shall be free indeed. Amen. Why am I not terrified? Because when God sets me free, I'm free indeed. Let's go to John 8, 32. Then you will know the truth. How to deal with a heavy delusion? You need to know the truth. If pastors would know the truth, they would never shut down churches. If the Christians would know the truth, they would never be terrified of the virus. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Who the truth sets free? You. Let's go to Galatians 5.1. It is for freedom. For what? 
For slavery? For disease? For being terrified? It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not, do not let yourselves be burdened again with a yoke of slavery. Let me read this again. Galatians 5.1 It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then. What we are to do? We are to stand. Amen. And do not let yourself be burdened again with the yoke of slavery. It is so simple people. Repent. Turn to God. And your eyes will be open. The delusion is no more when Jesus comes to your heart. Continue to be stubborn and pay the consequences and wear a mask. Here is a very interesting story from Daniel 4.29. Daniel 4.29. The king Nebuchadnezzar was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon. He said, it is not this great Babylon. It is not this great Calgary. It is not this great Canada. I have built as the royal residence, says the Grinch Nancy, <laughs> by my mighty power and for the glory of my pampers on my face, my majesty. Even as the words were on his lips, a voice came from heaven. This is what is decreed for you, King Nebuchadnezzar. Your royal authority has been taken from you. You will be driven away from people and you will live with the wild animals. You will eat grass like the ox. Seven times will pass by for you until, until you acknowledge that the Most High is sovereign over all kingdoms on earth and gives them to anyone he wishes. Immediately what had been said about Nebuchadnezzar was fulfilled. He was driven away from people and ate grass like the ox. His body was drenched with the dew of heaven until his hair grew like the feathers of an eagle and his nails like the claws of a bird. Acting like an animal turned into an animal. Today, I believe the Canadians, people in general, are acting even worse than animals. Mothers, in the name of convenience, are murdering their own children. Fathers abandon their families, and children act like rebellious brats, ungrateful, lazy, disobedient towards their parents. Rejecting the authority of God, listen to me, rejecting the authority of God always leads into insanity. Yeah. At the end, verse 34, at the end of the time, of that time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes towards heaven, and my sanity, what was restored to him? The heavy delusion, he was thinking he's an animal, he was acting like an animal, he was eating like an animal, but the heavy delusion was removed, and my sanity was restored. Then what did he do? When his eyes are open, what a man does? Then I praise the Most High. I honored and glorified him who lives forever. His dominion is an eternal dominion. Then she's come and go. Through those come and go. And they are no more. But his kingdom lasts forever. Never ending. His kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the peoples of earth are regarded as nothing. He does as he pleases with the powers of heaven and the peoples of the earth. No one can hold back his hand or say to him, what have you done? Yeah. At, this, at, the at the same time my sanity was restored. The heavy delusion was lifted. My honor and splendor were returned to me. I was restored to my throne and became even greater than before. You want your answer, Canada? You want prosperity back? You want to be called a nation of milk and honey once again? You got to go back to God. Amen. There's no other option. You have to go to your knees and you have to turn your eyes towards heaven and say, God, you are the God. Yeah. Besides you, there is no one else. Amen. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt and glorify the King of heaven because everything he does is right.
and all his ways are just. And those who walk in pride, he is able to humble. Amen. Canada has been humbled. If you want to be restored to your former glory, if you want the insanity to go, humble yourself before the living God. 2 Thessalonians, again, 2.11, For this reason God will send upon them a deluding influence for this cause, because they received not the love of the truth. They rejected the truth. The churches rejected the truth. The pastors rejected the truth. We can't even go and talk to the liberals and NDPs and all those delusional people. We're talking about the church. The church rejected the truth. Shall sent, Greek, means sends or is sending. The delusion is already beginning. God judicially sends hardness of heart on those who rejected the truth and gives them up in righteous judgment to Satan's delusions. They first cast off the love of the truth, then God gives them up to Satan's delusions, then they settle down into believing the lie. Heavy delusion. Have you heard the news? I hope you're not watching that garbage, but anyway, I'll give it to you. <laughs> Mayor of this amazing city of Calgary with his councillors had a meeting, of course, Zoom chat meeting. Yeah. Uh, they're working very hard. They're, they're working very hard. Once a day for five minutes, they are Zoom chatting. I mean, it's so hard. I mean, wow, we got to keep praying for them because they work so hard and they get $20,000 a month. But going back to the story, because of course we know we are in this together. <laughs> right? We are in this together. Their $20,000 and now our $900 every two weeks. We are in this together. I just want you to understand. We are in this together. So they, we are in this together. They talked about our future. And they're so loving and kind and then decided that feeding the homeless and being a pastor in the city of Calgary, that's punishable by the fullest of the law. And we will give you $1,200 tickets for even congregating and daring to speak in public and daring to feed the poor. But Santa Claus, this poor fella, what are we going to do about Santa Claus and his reindeers? Those poor creatures, I mean, I will tell you what I do with the reindeers. I shoot them and I eat them. But the city of Calgary has a different plans for the reindeers. I'm not kidding. Those poor creatures, they need to wear a mask. And they just declared yesterday that Santa Claus and the reindeers, it's a mandatory for them to wear masks. And more to that, they have been declared yesterday essential services. So when you see a reindeer on the street, you dare not to call the police on them. There are essential services providing a service to the city of Calgary, okay? That's what the mayor says. That's what the councillors say. They've lost their minds. You know how many screws are missing in their brains? Not, there is no mechanic that can, fi that can fix them. They're not only they are losing their screws, the screws are already missing. Yeah. They're already missing. They're so broken. I don't know to laugh, to smile, to I, I don't even know. We are going to have a show 7 p.m. with uh, Laura Lynn Thompson and Kevin, and we're going to talk about. I, I I don't know what to say. Call psychiatrists yeah. immediately. <laughs> Those poor people are dying. Yeah. Yeah. They're dying, and we need to help them. We need to send them to a mental asylum. We need to help those poor people. Pastors feeding the poor unessential. Churches unessential. Reindeer, a fictional character, essential. Wow. Well, you're talking about heavy delusion. I mean, I don't think it gets any better than that. I think in 1917, lots of doctors will have a blast with this. They would be examining this fake mayor in and out for probably 50 years, trying to find out what happened to those screws. Can we fix them? Can we replace them? But today, I guess, today, I guess uh, that's normal. You know what they are saying? They're saying, 
do not expect to go back to normal. Yeah. Well, when you get mayors like that, I don't think there will ever be any normal. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to declare aliens as essential services. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, what's next? <laughs> if Santa is essential and Randy is going to wear masks, <laughs> wow. That's a heavy delusion. I mean, this is, this is something else. You can't make this stuff up. <laughs> even, you know, even the people that write books, I mean, this is a heavy stuff. It's a Hollywood style. <laughs> Strong delusion in Greek means the powerful working of error. What is a heavy delusion? What is delusion in Greek? The powerful working of error. Answering to, to the energizing working of Satan. The same expression is applied to the Holy Ghost operation in believers. Powerful, energizing, working. Ephesians 1.19 Believe a lie which Antichrist's, Antichrist tells them. You see, God created everything and it was good. Man decided to rebel against God. Sin entered, and with sin, disaster, death, sickness, viruses, tears, sadness, fear, depression, all kinds of evil things that creeped into this side of eternity. The wages of sin was, and still is, death. We were doomed until God made the way. And that's what we're going to celebrate. Jesus coming. The government, in their heavy delusion, declared that Christmas is unessential and they've canceled Christmas. You cannot, unless you're Santa, you cannot visit your families. And unless you're reindeer, I mean, some of you look a little bit like reindeer, so maybe you qualify, but you gotta wear a mask. So if you're not Santa or reindeer, don't you dare visit your family. Don't you dare, because the SS will be knocking at your door. His love is bigger, you see. He made a way. He came, he died. He was born as a man. And that's what we're going to celebrate tomorrow, 1 o'clock. I want to see every one of you. And you are to bring 100 people with you. If you don't, don't come. <laughs> Would that work? Is this good enough threat? No, 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 come, come. Even if you only bring 50 people, come. <laughs> It's okay, we take, we take smaller numbers too. One o'clock, City Hall, we're going to tell those devils, those heavy people on heavy delusion, that you cannot cancel love, you cannot cancel hope, you cannot cancel Christmas, you cannot cancel Jesus, you cannot cancel church, you cannot ca cancel humanity. We will not let you. We will come as a family, with our children, and we'll celebrate the birth of Christ. Because if Santa can come, I can come as a pastor as well. <laughs> God's love is bigger than our shortcomings. His mercy is stronger than our failures. His compassion more powerful than His wrath. His forgiveness greater than our sins and His ways always lead towards freedom and life. That is why He wants us to share that with everyone. He has given us the gospel of His kingdom. And that's your job, that's my job, is to go out there and tell those dying people, terrified people, wearing a diaper on their face, tell them that there is another way, that there is hope, that there is freedom, that there is love. That there is mercy, there is forgiveness, if they would only be willing, like the prodigal son, to go back to the family's house. Yeah. Romans 1.16 Romans 1.16 I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power, power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. First to the Jew, 
than to the Greek. For the gospel reveals the righteousness of God that comes by faith from start to finish, just as it is written. The righteous will live by faith. That's why we're not terrified. Because without faith, the Bible says you cannot please God. When he comes back, he says, will I find faith on earth? So we have to be the church that has faith that our faith in God and the power of the cross and the name that is above every other name and the blood that was shed for every sickness is bigger than the so-called corona virus. The wrath of God is being revealed, made it obvious, evident, shown shown into them from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who sur suppress the truth by their wickedness. There are some that will suppress the truth. There are some that will fight the truth. And we see this at every corner. That's why they want to shut down the churches. Those devils cannot stand the preaching of the truth. For what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood from His workmanship. Forever, forever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see His invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. Some people will say to me, well, what if they never heard about Jesus? What if no one preached to them? Listen, the Bible says that there is no one without excuse because God reveals Himself in nature, in the universe. The astronomers are saying, and the people that went to moon, and their travel there, they said that they witness an expansion of the universe. God is a creator and He still creates, and they witness that. It appears. It's amazing. God is, you see, He is working every day. He didn't took a vacation, went to Hawaii. He is constantly working. He's interested in our lives. I wouldn't mind to go there, but... <laughs> For although they knew God, they neither glorified Him, they did not honor Him as God, nor gave thanks to Him. But they became futile in their thinking and darkened in their foolish hearts. Although they claimed to be wise, many people are claim, claiming to be wise. Doctor this and Doctor that and Chief Officer this and you know, it's like a game, you know? And they are fighting who has the, the, the best sounding title. Yeah. They're all devilish titles. Because they are lying titles. They claim to be wise. They became fools. And exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images of mortal men. They worship idols made to look like mere people. An image in the form of corruptible men. Yeah. And birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore God, again, God gave, so God abandoned them, gave them over in the desires of their hearts to impurity, to do whatever shameful things lasts of their hearts for the dishonoring of their bodies with one another between themselves. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie into falsehood and worshiped and served the creature, served the created thing rather than the creator who is forever worthy of praise. For this reason, God, who? God, gave them over to dishonorable passions. God abandoned them to their shameful desires, vile affections. Even their women exchange natural relations for unnatural ones against nature. Women no longer wanted to have sex in a natural way. And they did things with each other other than were, that were not normal. Likewise, the men abundant natural relations with women and burned with lust were inflamed 
consumed with passion for one another. Men committed indecent acts, shameless acts with other men, and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. You know, out of this whole pandemic, you know who is the most terrified group of people? Yeah. Homosexuals, transgender. You know why? Because their immune system, because of what they do, is so compromised yeah. that they're panicking. They're completely panicking. They're broken. They're depressed. They don't know what to do because they might die. They may die at any moment because of their compromised immune system. When you have a society so wicked and perverted that the natural becomes unwanted and the unnatural becomes praised, be sure of it that God will step to judge. Mm -hmm. Verse 28, furthermore, since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, he gave them up to a deprived mind. A paraphrase to you. You don't want me? You don't want the truth? You're rebelling against me year after year after year? I'm telling you don't do it, you keep doing it. You keep smoking the dope, you keep taking the needle, you have sex without marriage, you go and do crazy stupid things against nature. God will knock and he will knock and he will knock and one day he will say, fine, have it your way. I'm taking out my umbrella of protection. Now I give you in the hands of the devil. Let him have a feast with you. Yes. He gave them up to a, depri a deprived mind, reprobate mind, to do what ought not to be done, what is not right, indecent things. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, unrighteousness, fornication, evil, greed, maliciousness and depravity. They're full of envy, murder, strife, deceit and malice. They're gossips, backbiters, proud, slanderers, gall haters, insolent, arrogant and boastful. They invent new forms, listen to this, they invent new forms of evil. They disobey their parents, they are sen senseless, faithless, heartless, merciless, less foolish untrustworthy although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things are worthy of death they not only continue to do those things but also approve of those who practice them yeah. they not only do them but they even applaud encourage praise support help others who practice them not only they will allow evil to be done, they assist evil to be done. Is that not the government of Canada right now at every level of government? Yeah. They're not there to protect you. They're not there to bless you. They are there to curse you and they bless anyone that curses you. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone that does evil is being praised, including the terrorists that received from the federal government what $11 million, a murderer that was cutting the hands and the feet of Christians, received $11 million from the federal government. Yeah. Praised. Evil is being praised as something good, and good is being punished. They help others who practice this evil. Let's go to Isaiah 47.10. Mazana, how much do I have? Isaiah 47.10. You felt secure in your wickedness and said, no one sees me. Is that not what the people say? No one sees me. I can do whatever I want. I'm a, I'm a police officer. I have the badge. I can get away with the murder. Really. Technically speaking, they can get away with lots of things just because they are behind their uniform. And they think no one sees what they're doing in secret. But the Bible is very clear that God sees everything. Your wisdom and your knowledge, they have deluded you. For you have said in your heart, I am, listen to this, I am. Is that not what the people are saying? I am. 
They are taking the title of the Almighty God. God is I am that I am. But now humans, politicians especially, people in authority, they stand before others and they say, I am. I am the law. I am the justice. I am. And there is no one besides me, me, I, and myself, sitting on a throne. I am just like God, even better, smarter, and more powerful. I am in control. Voltaire said this, those who can make you believe absurdities can make you commit atrocities. He also said common sense is not so common. And I see that in the church. Yeah. Have you met people? I've met many people like this. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just my anointing. <laughs> but I meet people and I say, my truck's color is red. And they say, no, it's yellow. Yeah. It's red. No, it's purple. Yeah. No, it's red. No, it's white. Have you met people like this? You're telling them this is an elephant and they say, no, it's a giraffe. And it just does not make any sense. And you think to yourself, what's wrong with me or them? I see an elephant. How can you mistake an elephant for a giraffe? A giraffe has a longer head, okay, a neck. Just in case you don't know the difference. First Timothy 4, 1 Timothy 4.1 But the Spirit explicitly says that in the latter times some will fall away from the faith paying attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now. People have become gods in their own minds. They want to be in control. They want to call the shots. Job 21.13 Job 21, 13. They spend their days in prosperity, just like the Canadians for many, many decades. And go down to Sheol in peace. Yet they say to God, leave us alone. For we have no desire to know your ways. Who is the Almighty that we should serve Him? And what would we gain? What would we profit? If we pray to him. Is that not Canadian mind? Yeah. Who is this God that we should serve him? Yeah. We are gods. After all we have a liberals watching after us. We don't need God. If the NDP and liberals are watching over you. You can sleep no problem. I don't know why you're laughing. I'm advertising liberal party and NDP. They're so good right? If you want to end up in hell, vote them back in. In their minds, God is useless, unwanted, not needed. The one that created everything is demoted and man is promoted. Idol rules the land. When that happens, literally hell gets loose. Lawlessness, freedom gone. Prosperity gone. Trouble, famine in the land. Slavery kicks in. Let's go to Job 22, 17. They said to God, the liberals, the NDPs, the so-called conservatives, the leaders in the country, the pastors even, they said to God, depart from us. What can Almighty do to us? Proverbs 1, 29. For they hated knowledge and chose not to fear the Lord. Isaiah 30, 11. Get out of the way. Leave the pathway. Read us of the Holy One of Israel. Those are the people saying today to the Almighty God. Let's go to Jeremiah 9, 6. You dwell in the midst of deception. Is that not what we see everywhere we look? We are living in the midst of deception. In their deceit, they refuse to know me, declares the Lord. When that happens, you're begging God to step in and judge you. Arrogance and pride, he cannot stand. The moment you start to dictate God what and how, you have entered a path of destruction. Let's go to James 4, 6. God opposes, resists, works against the proud. 
but gives grace to? Do we need more grace in this country? Or we need more wrath of God and the judgment of God? Yeah, I'll tell you what is the difference. We have entered the judgment of God in our land. But after the judgment comes, what is the judgment? Judgment is a spanking and God is trying to get our attention. But after the spanking comes the wrath of God. If the nation rejects the spanking, rejects the judgment, their wrath will come. So you think this is over? Unless Canadians and the churches will rise up, this is just the beginning. Yeah. This is just the beginning. In these days, we see many people in the church that are completely delusional in their approach towards God and His Word. They have invented God after their own desires, ambitions, plans, and heart. An idol meant made in their minds for their own purposes. No different than the Pharisees and the Sadducees of old. God became their own means to achieve what they wanted and not what God wants. They claim that they, rep they do represent God, that they are His spokesman, but in reality they work against God. Jeremiah 23, 21. I did not send these prophets, he says. But they ran. They went anyway. I did not speak to them, but they prophesied. God is saying that they go and do, but not for him. Rather than themselves. A bunch of hypocrites running around proclaiming nonsense. Have you met people like that? Yes. I think we're surrounded with people like that. Let's go to Isaiah 5:20. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to those who call evil good. Woe to those politicians. Woe to those police officers, bylaw officers, and everyone so-called medical chief officers, woe to them because my God is angry with wickedness. He says, I am angry with the wicked every day. When the Spirit of the Lord comes, there is freedom and delusion has no place. And today, we clearly see the difference between the delusional ones and the real church of Jesus Christ. Clearly, you will see who is who. Clearly, you see who is the real shepherd. And at the first sign of trouble, at the first sound of a bullet, they are nowhere to be found. Cowards, fake, hired guns, not working for my God, working for themselves. Father, I thank you for your word. I give you all the glory and honor, Father. Thank you. Thank you that you have opened our eyes. Thank you that we are not, you have not given us a heavy delusion, but we can see clearly what's going on all around us. Thank you, Father, that you have given us a spirit of sound mind and boldness, and freedom. And we give you all the glory for that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Church, if you need prayer, you're welcome to come. I'll lay hands on you. And I'll pray for you. And now we're going to have an amazing um, Oneg. That's how it's called, right? Oneg. And uh, then we go to the rally. If you can, 1.30, it starts with Mission 7. Tomorrow, please remember, 1 p.m., 1 p.m., City Hall. We're going to have a Christmas celebration. We have gifts for the homeless. We got triple A steak, shish kebab. We got amazing things prepared for our less fortunate. And we're going to worship the living God together. Uh, reindeer is going to be cooked as well, so. And I'm cooking our animals without masks. The animals are not uh, wearing masks while we are grilling them.